Welcome back you legends, I'm Dr. Khan, let's get right into this video. So the stock market today closed basically flat, 0.2% up on the S&P, 02 on the Nasdaq, and uh, almost exactly flat on the Dow. Let's take a look at the different uh, groups. Energy was massively, massively leading, up 2% on the day. Tech basic materials up 0.4%. Industrials, utilities up 0.3%. Consumer defensive up 0.24%, financials and communication services as well as cyclicals basically flat on the day. And the laggards were healthcare and real estate. Again, we're continuing to see a rotation into defensive sectors like uh, utilities and consumer defensive as well as inflation driven sectors like basic materials and energy. Technology really should have been down on the day, but thanks to the semiconductor uh, sector, it ended up lifting the entire sector slightly, a little bit. Microsoft, Apple, and Facebook were down on the day as well as Tesla. Google and Amazon were slightly up on the day, but the clear, clear winners for the day were semiconductors and energy stocks. Now, I do want to jump into the semiconductor index first before I get into the S&P 500, and it's because of this, guys. We have a very, very obvious divergence here. We have a double top formation with a lower high on the momentum and a bearish crossover. So it looks to me like the semiconductor uh, stocks will begin to sell off very shortly. Now, let's take a look at the S&P 500. Again, we continue to see indecision here. We had an indecision candle here, another one here, another doji here. So we had three consecutive days of indecision right uh, as we approach that 200 daily moving average and this significant, significant resistance line. Uh, again, so it is very obvious that the rally is losing steam and I'm seeing many, many warning signs that a crash is imminent. I'm going to jump into the first one and it's this high yield bonds the junk bonds continue continue to show significant major divergence and in fact we have a bearish crossover on the macd uh, i want to point out guys what happened after every time we had a divergent signal on the junk bonds and the s p where the s p continued to move up while the high yield bonds actually uh topped and started to form lower highs uh, February 2nd to February 9th, take a look at this guys, February 2nd to February 9th, we had a higher high on the S&P, a lower high on uh, the HYG, and we ended up selling off 10% in the next uh, two to three uh, trading weeks. We had another divergence right here, guys. The S&P 500 put in a higher high from April 12th to April 21st, while the HYG uh, went on to put a lower high uh, in the same period. And again, we ended up with a significant, significant sell-off, 13% from uh, the top of that divergence to the bottom of the sell-off. We had another divergence right here before that insane, insane June sell-off between May 27th and June 2nd. We had this massive divergence, look at this guys, the HYG topped on May 27th and continued to make lower highs, while the S&P 500 actually put in a higher high. Again, a massive, massive sell-off, 12.5% from the top of that uh, divergence to the bottom of the sell-off. And we're seeing the exact same thing, look at this guys, uh, August 11th to August 16th, right here, August 11th to August 16th, and we've kept putting higher uh, highs on the S&P 500. We do have this gap right here. I expect this gap to be filled very, very quickly in a sharp, sharp move to the downside. After that, guys, we also have this uh, critical pivot zone at $390. Look at this, support, support, broken through, resistance, resistance, broken through, back tested out, off that level, and we had that massive rally. So this is a critical, critical zone, and I expect the stock market to sell off and uh, go back at least, at least to this level, to $390 uh, into September and possibly into October. One other key level below that is right here at uh, $377, $13 below this uh, level right here to fill this gap. One last gap we have is the gap uh, right here at $365. I went ahead and added those levels guys on the chart so we can reference them uh, at a later date. I did start to build a, a core short position on the S&P 500 using put options guys. I'm going to continue to build on this position in the next few trading sessions as we get more and more sell signals. And the way that I've structured this trade guys is for me to make triple my initial investment on very very little risk. 
If you guys want to follow my trades, my investments, my alerts, all my buy and sell uh, signals and my trades, please check out the link in the description below. It's 20 bucks a month and you get to access a bunch of cool stuff, including every single trade that I make exactly when I make it. Now, let's take a look at the triple Qs, the NASDAQ. We're getting super, super close to a bearish crossover on the NASDAQ. Again, we've already seen a bearish crossover on the semiconductor index the fastest growing index in the NASDAQ and often the leading index in the NASDAQ. So the internals are starting to break down on the NASDAQ and the same thing with the S&P. Everywhere, guys, everywhere I've looked, I've, I, I keep seeing warning signs that a crash is imminent. Take a look at the dollar yesterday. Yesterday, guys, I was talking about how we all should be watching the 107 level and how that if we broke through 107 and we started to uh, and we held there and started to move sideways for a little bit that would be the launching pad for the dollar to move up and for the stock market to uh, crash and now we're seeing positive divergence on the macd with two green days and growing momentum the momentum is uh, picking up speed Again, guys, this is warning that a crash is imminent. Let's take a look at the 10-year uh, yield. The 10-year yield continued to, to put in higher highs and higher lows as the stock market ha has been doing the same. So one of these two is lying. Either the stock market is lying or yields are lying. And it's often the case that the stock market has it wrong and bond traders have it right. Again, I'm watching for a head and shoulders formation to form right here to get rejected at the 3% level, right at that 50 daily moving average. We have a bullish crossover. We continue to move up on the 10-year yield, putting more and more pressure on the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. Remember, guys, growth stocks do not like high yields. High yields compress valuations and drive the stock market down. The two-year yield is now has now completed, completed a bull flag. We had a false break right here. We need to see a break above 3.3% and for us to stay there for a while. And I suspect that the two-year yield will continue to move up to three and a half, possibly to 3.85%. That terminal uh, rate, that terminal Fed funds rate by the end of the year, we're expecting that the uh, Fed funds rate will settle at around 3.8% to 4%, depending on how aggressive the Fed uh, ends up being in the September and November Fed meetings with the rate hikes. Again, another one that I showed you yesterday, guys, uh, this is ExxonMobil, the largest uh, stock in the uh, S&P 500 energy sector. This is the apple of oil. And uh, look at this, guys. We had this absolutely humongous, humongous bull pennant, this bull flag. We were compressing and we have now seen a break above the previous high here on August the 12th. I need to see a clear, a clear break above this resistance line. We need to see a candle that looks like this, and that will trigger massive, massive buying into the energy sector and oil and will crush the stock market. I want to show you guys uh, oil. This is uh, UK oil, Brent crude oil, the international benchmark for oil. And we're seeing a bit of a divergence here, guys, right? We had a double bottom form right here. We are seeing a tiny, tiny, tiny divergence on the momentum. Let's take a look at the smaller time frames, the two-hour chart. We have another divergence right here, a lower low right here with a higher low on the uh, momentum. We're now flagging. A lot of people have been calling for oil to uh, move down all the way to $65. I'm not in that camp. I think oil will continue uh, to stay strong, if not move up at least uh, maintain these uh, high prices. It is quite possible, guys, that we might see one last flush down to $85 on crude oil, where we form a false break bottom, perhaps one last divergence before catapulting up to the upside. Again, putting a lot more pressure on the stock market and inflation. Let's take a look at Tesla. In the last couple of videos, guys, I said that I like Tesla because I saw this uh, buying off this demand zone, previously a supply zone turned into demand zone. So I did like that. We're now seeing a cup and handle formation, but I am really worried about uh, Tesla, not because of Tesla itself, but because of the triple Qs and the S&P 500 showing significant signs of topping. We also have this uh, very obvious negative divergence on the MACD where we had uh, a double top right here with negative divergence on the uh, PPO. And remember guys, because Tesla is a high beta stock, if the Nasdaq moves down, Tesla will move down with the Nasdaq. 
and often underperform the Nasdaq. Let's take a look at the insane rally in Apple that we've seen in the last couple of months. Look at this absolute insanity, guys. 35% from the June lows. Not only that, we broke through this resistance line, this significant, significant resistance line. I don't buy this. I don't believe this. I think this is a false break. We will definitely, in my opinion, sell off and fill this gap very shortly. We have another gap right here at $157. I think this gap will be filled in the second phase of the sell-off. Remember, guys, this is a key, key pivot zone acted as support in the past once broken through it acted as significant significant resistance once broken through again it will act as support i absolutely hate apple as a stock at these levels the valuation is absolute insanity there's no way the company will be able to sustain the growth that it has seen in 2020 and 2021 off that off the uh, massive boost in sales that the company saw during the lockdowns, people buying laptops and devices and all of that stuff. This will come to an end. It has come to an end. In fact, looking back at the last earnings report, it was very obvious that the company's growth is slowing drastically. People keep piling into the stock, okay? Like, like, it's, a, like it's a miracle stock that can never go down. While, in fact, we had the exact same behavior at the worst time. At the worst time of the 2008 stock market crash right here guys right here we had that initial sell-off within the stock market and apple as well and then we had this massive recovery where apple significantly outperformed the stock market it ended up fading for the next few months and eventually apple lost more than 50 percent of its value in a matter of five weeks so be very careful here, guys. Apple is no miracle stock. Apple moves down with the market. It just tends to hang in there for just a tiny bit longer. And unfortunately, that ends up exacerbating the uh, impending sell-off that's going to be coming. Let's take a look at the earnings beat data. 60%, a miserable reading. We tend to see this reading at 75 plus in bull markets. So we're seeing a compression in earnings, a uh, minor recession in earnings. Be very careful, guys. This rally in the stock market is clearly, is clearly not being driven by fundamentals. Remember, guys, that the uh, earnings expectations have actually come down significantly. And even though those expectations have come down, companies are still failing to beat those uh, earnings expectations. Let's take a look at the fear and greed index. This is the fear and greed index timeline. Let's take a look at the overview right here. We're sitting at 54, a neutral reading. Uh, just a couple of days, we were sitting at 56. The first greed reading that we've seen in nearly four months now, we are seeing a clear topping here in the fear and greed at 57. I did say in the last couple of videos, guys, that we need to see greed top at around 58 for this uh, bear market rally to in fact be a bear market rally and not a new bull market recovery. We've now consistently seen the fear and greed index put in lower highs and lower lows right we had this reading at 77 in november of last year then 66 in january 62 in april and uh, at the end of that uh bear market rally and we've so far topped at 57 we could still see one final push guys one last push to the upside trapping in even more investors and traders unfortunately and then completely pulling the rug from underneath them and crashing the market market momentum sitting at fear we had this significant break above the 100, 125 daily moving average in the past bear market rallies we had a couple of uh, spikes and rejections another uh, spike and a, a rejection and we're now seeing a significant break. We might see some buying off the 125 daily moving average. But if we end up making a double top or a lower high, be warned that that will be a sign for more selling to come. Stock price breadth sitting at 0%. I expect this to start turning back down as the selling intensifies. Uh, price uh, Stock price breadth, the breadth indicator, the McClellan's volume summation index has been a basing for several weeks now as the market has been rallying. That was a, a bullish sign. But unfortunately, we're now seeing a break to a newer low. And this is the hallmark of bear market rallies, where you see insane rallies in big uh, defensive names like Apple, while the stock market breadth, which measures how many stocks in the stock market are participating in this rally, the number of stocks participating in this rally has been declining, not moving up. 
which is a warning sign that this is a bear market rally and not a bull market. The put to call ratio, it bottomed right here yesterday. We are now putting in a new reading. We're forming a double bottom in the put to call ratio. This might be your last chance to hedge your positions and buy puts at a cheap price or to go full bear and, and put on bearish positions. Well, this might be the last opportunity before the market starts to head back down. Market volatility has been basing now for the entirety of the week. Remember guys that market volatility has been declining for eight straight weeks so far. That is extremely rare. That is an extremely rare overbought reading. It indicates that the market has been significantly overbought and volatility is now creeping back up. It has finally put in a higher low this week. And there's a very high likelihood that we will see a higher low this week and another higher low next week. And that will create the launching pad for volatility to move back up, at least to touch this descending resistance line at around the 30 level on the VIX. And again, on the daily chart, guys, we're still waiting for this bullish crossover to occur. Every single time we had this bullish cross over on the VIX guys after we made a low it marked the top in the stock market this orange line is the S&P 500 and I just want to show you guys every single time we had that signal what was going on in the market the first signal we had the market top just a couple of days later then it moved sideways for a little while and then we had that significant sell-off the second reading it marked the top exactly and we started to sell off same thing here guys it marked the top and then we started to sell off right here it marked the top and we started to sell off and again in June it marked the top and then we had that massive sell-off and as soon as we see that bullish crossover, it will likely mark the top in this rally, bear market rally most likely, and we will see a massive sell-off. Now let's take a look at seasonality, guys. Another warning sign that a massive sell-off is coming. Look at this. This red line, guys, looks at the second year new Democratic president. The seasonality after a new Democratic president is elected, specifically the first midterm election after that president is elected. And look at this, guys. We tend to have the significant, significant sell-off towards the end of August. And it happened systematically, guys. In all midterm years, we had this significant sell-off towards the end of August, beginning of September, another sell-off in September, and one last sell-off in October. We also tend to see significant volatility in uh, September and October. Not to mention, guys, on the 27th of August, we will have the Jackson Hole Symposium, where a lot of Fed speakers will take the stage, and chief among them will be Jay Powell, and he will talk the market down. This rally that we've seen in the stock market and the bond market, guys, hasn't done significant work that the Fed has put in, and it is absolutely not in the best interest of the Fed to see financial conditions easing. Look at this, guys loosening financial conditions, threaten central bank inflation fight. I talked about this a lot in the uh, previous couple of videos. Please guys look up the wealth effect. The wealth effect leads to higher spending by us and it leads to us borrowing more. And that leads to a significant feedback loop into inflation, moving inflation back up. So it is absolutely in the Fed's best interest to see the market move down, not move up. And there's an extreme risk next week, guys, that the Fed will start talking the market down. This is a term that you will hear a lot in the media, and it basically means manipulation. The Fed will manipulate the market to lead it to go down, to crash, to sell off. They need to make us all feel poor so that we would spend less to compensate for their incompetence and complete and utter failure to control inflation and maintain whatever shred of credibility they have left. So be very careful, guys. The Fed will want to crash stocks. Let's take a look at what we have coming next week. We have the Chicago Fed National Activity Index on Monday. We have the S&P Manufacturing PMI on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we have the Durable Goods Orders and the Core Capital Equipment Orders. Thursday, we have more jobless claims and the uh, GDP with the revised GDP figure. Watch out for a revision downward that will send the market uh, into a spiral. And Friday. Friday, we have that dreaded, dreaded PCE, personal consumption expenditures figure, the preferred inflation figure by the Fed. And we have the five-year inflation expectations and the consumer sentiment index. So we have a lot of risks next week, guys. We have, we have the Jackson Hole Symposium beginning on the 25th of August. That will be next Thursday, going on to the 27th. 
7th, uh, so from Thursday to Saturday, the Fed, Jerome Powell, will want to talk the market down. Mark this date on your calendar. So we have this as a major risk, and we have uh, the PCE figure coming out, and we have significant divergences on the S&P and the HYG, double tops everywhere, divergences everywhere in the charts, and we're so, so close to a bullish crossover on the VIX. Unfortunately, guys, this bullish crossover tends to be a slightly lagging indicator. Uh, we get this crossover uh, about two days after the sell-off starts. This happened in June. It happened back here in April. We had these uh, crossover on the, the 7th and the market started to sell off on the 4th. Same thing here, guys. We had the crossover several days after uh, the sell-off started. So watch out, guys. The sell-off could start any day now. If you follow the uh, trend counts on the S&P 500, we will complete an eight count this Friday. And that indicates that the Monday will complete a perfect nine count sell signal as long as Monday we see a nice red candle. That's all I have for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, wow.